Back to our top story, Cuba-U.S. ties. U.S. President Donald Trump announcing new rules and restrictions. He canceled Obama's policy, calling it completely one-sided. To help us understand all of this, I'm joined from Havana by Cuban diplomat and former Ambassador Carlos Azugaray. Ambassador Azugaray, I'm going to read a, a quote from President Obama uh, in his announcement in Miami. He said, I'm canceling Obama's deal with Cuba. Um, Obama's deal with Castro regime was misguided, enriched only the Cuban government. Those days are over. Your reaction, sir? Oh, well, uh, obviously he's not canceling the agreement. That's, that's, uh, that's uh, rhetoric. If he would cancel the agreement, he would have to break diplomatic relation with Cuba and, and the White House saying that the embassies remain, that the air, airplane flights remain, that uh, the, uh, the money that the uh, Cuban Americans sent to Cuba in remittances remains. All, uh, if you remember what the first thing that Obama did was open up travel of Cuban Americans to Cuba, which was permitted only once every year, and uh, permitting more remittances, well, that's the first thing Obama did. He hasn't reversed that. And of course, diplomatic relations has not been reversed. He's saying that all the agreements and treaties that were signed between Cuba and the United States remain in place. So obviously, this was this canceling was a speech for uh, those guys who were there, Marco Rubio, and to please these guys, but to please verbally, not really. Well, it seems like he is restricting some things as far as U.S. investment, business, easing, uh, really not easing travel restrictions for ordinary Americans. But let me get to a point that you said. How much of this, in your opinion, is really about human rights? How much of it is about appeasing his Cuban-American base and keeping a campaign promise when it seems there is co there's contradictions in President Obama's foreign policy, considering the relationship the U.S. has with countries like Saudi Arabia. Well, precisely, this is not about human rights. I mean, if Cuba was sitting in a big reservoirs of oil and had $110 billion to buy in weapons or any other merchandise, uh, there wouldn't be any concern about human rights in Cuba, so that's not the issue. The other thing is that I believe that he's making a big mistake. Why? Because during the, the period when he was running for the nomination of the Republican Party, he was saying something completely different. He was saying, well, I like the deal, and I would continue, but I would have made a better deal. So he didn't, he didn't say, use the language that he used today when he was running for... for um, for the nomination of the Republican Party. Who was using that language? Marco Rubio. Who won the Florida primary? Donald Trump. Who lost the Florida primary? Marco Rubio. So you see, uh, it doesn't help. Uh, it won't help him with the electorate in Miami or in Florida because the electorate there is 65% behind the Obama policy. Ambassador Azugaray, he also had a message uh, to the Cuban government with a list of demands, release political prisoners, stop jailing innocent people, open yourself to political and economic reform. Do you think the Cuban government will have a response? Will they have, will they, I mean, what do you think they're going to do? Do you think they'll have an official reaction here? Well, I think that in this case, uh, I have been watching the way that the Cuban government has reacted to some of Donald Trump's more uh, blistering uh, statements, uh, they pass on the horrible things he said about Fidel Castro. I don't think this time they'll pass. I think this time they will respond. And of course, they will respond consequently. One important point, Cuba does not uh, accept impositions, ultimatums, or this kind of, of rhetoric. So the Cuban government is going to say, Listen, these are issues, you are, you are involved in issues that are of our own sovereignty. We will decide on these issues at the moment that we have to decide. But, you know, this is mainly rhetoric. It was all a big rhetoric exercise to please those hardline Cuban Americans who are a minority. They are not a majority. All right, we'll have Miami. it there. Thank so, you. So uh, let's see how that develops. Of course, it would there would be damage to the Cuban economy. And 
the most incredible thing is that Rubio and these guys are claiming that what they suggested would help uh, um, normal Cubans with private businesses. No, it's not true. For example, individual travel has, is going to be canceled. Individual travelers are the ones who go to the private houses. All right. The we'll big groups go to the hotels. Ambassador so, Carlos Azugaray. It's quite contradictory. All right. We'll have to leave it there. Ambassador Azugaray, live for us from Havana. Thank you so much.